Aloha everyone, my name is Chris and this is AppleScript Today. Today I'm going to show you how to make a log file. This is usually a text file or a CSV file that you can use to tell yourself when you did a particular thing or when the computer did a particular thing. The main reason I use this kind of script is to create a backup log. So when the computer backs up the hard drive or backs up some other thing that I have it backing up, it puts the date and time into this log file so that I know when it happened. So the first thing that we're going to show you is we're going to put the code within this try block here. Now, if your code is very simple, you don't have to do this. But the more complicated your codes become, the more you want the code to tell you if something is wrong, if something goes wrong. So what this does is if something goes wrong, if there's an error, you get this display dialog which will pop up and tell you that there's an error. Now if you didn't have it within the try block and it was running in the background and there was an error, there was a problem, depending upon what the code is, it might just fail and not tell you why. It might just stop running and nothing would pop up saying this is why it stopped running. So the first step in creating the log file is to tell the computer where you want this file to be. And I want it to be in my documents folder. So we'll set the variable here. And AppleScript is full of these little shortcuts that are built in that you can use. Like, for instance, you can tell it to use the path to the documents folder, which it knows what that is. So you don't have to type out username, colon, something colon something colon documents you can just do this but we also want to put the file name in here the example that I'm using uh, I use the year so I have all my backups for the year in one file so we will say the uh, current year now you could just hard code this in here what the current year is but Apple script has a lot of things you can do with dates so we will tell it to get the year of the current date and this is going to be a text file so we'll say dot text and all of this as one string and so if we run this just to see what this returns you will see down here that this creates this line of code which represents this file which actually doesn't exist yet. We're going to say if the file doesn't exist, because if the file doesn't exist, then we want the computer to create it. So then we need this line of code here, and then we need to, which opens the file, and then we need to close. All that does is create the file and tell the computer that we're now uh, ready to write to it, and then you close access so that you can then actually go on to another line of code and actually write something in it. If a, current, if, if a file for this year doesn't exist, then it will create one. If it does exist, if it already exists, then this won't do anything. For instance, as I showed you right now in the documents, there's nothing in there. So if we go over here and run this, you can see down here, that it did this thing, open for access, close access, and if we go over to documents, there it is. So now that we have determined that there is or isn't a file there to write to, the next thing we're going to do is tell the computer what we want to put in this file. So as I said, I use this primarily to show when a backup was done, and I like to do the current date and time. Now there's a lot you can do with date and time, in Apple script, but there's also a lot you can do at date and time in shell scripts. So we have this line of code, which does a shell script, sets a variable to the shell script. So this looks more complicated than it is. It's just gives you the date and the time. And I'll show you what I mean. If I just run it, what this code, all this complicated looking code did was give you today's date and today's time right there. Next we have to actually tell the computer to put this time into this file. 
So this is another shell script. And all this is saying is that we want to put the time, we're going to echo the time. And then we need these little arrows here. And then we need to tell it what file to write this information into. We need to tell it to go to the POSIX path, which is the shell scripts way of understanding where it is, which is different from the Mac finder way of understanding. And the other thing I'm doing here is using the quoted form of these things. And sometimes you, you have to do this and sometimes you don't. I normally just do this because that will take care of any spaces. If there are spaces in this line of characters or in this line of characters, the telling it it's the quoted form means to include all those spaces too, because sometimes shell scripts interpret spaces as meaning something else. So now if we run this, this will create this file. It will figure out what time it is, and it will put that time into this file. So let's do that. And so if we go over here to Documents, you see that it created the file, and you see right there that I now know that the computer ran a backup today at this time. If we do it again, it will just add another line underneath this. So it's still the same date, but now we did a few seconds later. And I could go on doing this. And there we go. So that's a very simple way to create a log file. In this instance, showing you when, at what date and time you did a particular thing. As I said, I use this primarily for backups. But there are other things you can use this kind of code for. And so let's show you one more example of that. So another thing you could use this code to do is to create a file that specifically tells you what date and time you did a particular thing, but maybe it's not going to be the same thing every time. Maybe you're working on a project, you're working on a document, you're doing, you're doing something, and you want to say that, okay, at this date and time I did this. You can actually have the computer prompt you to type something in. So this display dialog is going to come up and it's going to say, it's going to ask you or tell you to log your activity and we can give it a title here. And so then we set the default answer to nothing and we want to put an OK button. You could put a cancel button and an OK button. I'm just going to put an OK button. And we want to use the caution icon. So this will pop up and ask us to type in something. And then we will set this variable to the text returned of that dialog. And then we will set the final text that we want in this file to that. And then we're going to put this comma in here. Because we are creating a CSV or a comma separated values file, and I'll show you why we're going to do that in a second. And then we're going to put the time and all of that as a string. Then we will tell the computer to put that into this file. So if we've done this correctly, it will create the CSV file, which does not exist yet. And then the next time you run this script, when it sees that it does exist, it won't, it won't do anything. So then we'll get the time, and then we'll say what we uh, want to log, what activity we want to log, and then we will 
put that activity with the time we did it, and that will go into this CSV file, and you'll see what that looks like in the finder. So let's run this and see what happens. So my activity was that I edited some text. And we say OK. And go over here. And now this is this new CSV file that we just created. You can see that it looks like that. But if I hit the space bar to do a quick view, you will see that it gives us this neat little thing where you remember that comma, right? So here's where that comma was. It displays, that's what we typed in for uh, our activity, and that's the time. So now I don't have to remember that I did on this project that I'm working on this particular thing. I can just go and see what I did. Now this is useful for a lot of reasons. Let's run it again so it shows you uh, adding a second line here. So let's say this time I answered Bob's email. And we go back over to Documents, and now you see that that's in there. And if I spacebar that to see it, you can now see I have this nice thing that I can very easily read and see what I did and when I did it. So that is a couple of variations of creating a log file. And you can play around with that and see what you want to do with it. Until the next time, my name is Chris, and this has been AppleScript Today. Thank you very much.